Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hongbing Lu. I'm from Huawei Technologies. And I was the Matlab PTL in the last release. And I'm going to present the, the new project that's called the Zun. And this work is collaborated with other people's uh, Qingming's and Ali's and Maduri's. But they are not able to come, so I'm going to present it in my, by myself. So I'm going to generally talk about what's the how to run the open stack on top of the how to run container on top of the open stack. And I'm going to introduce the Matlab projects and the Zen and the Zoom projects. And I'm going to give a demo of the project. So there are several ways to run a container that is on top of the open stacks. The first way is to consider is to consider a container that is like a Nova instance. So there's an open stack that is deploying on top of the infrastructures. And open stack Nova is the component that is to abstract the underlying compute resource and provide a general API that is for users to provision the resource. And Nova is integrated with different hypervisors. And the hypervisor is going, going to create a Nova instance which is normally is a virtual machines. But in the case of the containers, the NOAA is interact with the container runtime that is through the hypervisor interface. And it creates a NOAA instance, which is actually the containers. And in this case, each container that is belong to a talent. So it is possible to have many containers. It is possible to have two containers that belong to the two different talents that is scheduled in the same physical host. And this causes security issues because the container generally don't have the strong isolation capabilities. So it is generally not a practice to schedule container from different talents in the same host. And the second way is to use a virtual machines to run the containers. So there's a hypervisors and there's a set of virtual machines and the container is run on top of the virtual machines. So in this case, the virtual machine is used as a, as a isolation for the containers from different talents. And this will address the security issues. But as the number of containers that is grow, growing and to thousands and hundreds, it's very hard to manage all the containers that is distributed in different virtual machines. So this is possibly the most common way to run a container on OpenStack. It, is, it has a set of virtual machines, and it deploys a container orchestration engines, a COEs, that is on top of a set of virtual machines, and use the COEs to manage the set of containers. And we can see that the COE is a great tool and very popular. But the COE didn't fit into the OpenStack by itself. There's, it needs a set of projects or tools that is to hook the COE into the open stack. And so first is the deployments. It needs the tools that is to deploy the COE into a set of virtual machines and make sure it's managed and scaled. So Magnum, the Magnum project is created for this purpose. And then a COE needs the authentications. It need to it need a list of users and identify and in the API call it identify the API call of the users and authorize the the API access. So, but the COE generally didn't store a list of users in its SCD or data store. So it need an external authentication service. So in OpenStack, the key zone is the authentication service. So it is quite natural to integrate a COE into OpenStack. And, it's, and an example of that is the, there's a key zone of one plugin that is in the Kubernetes. That is for doing this purpose. And another set of problem is the networks and the storage. So for the networks in the container communities, the general solution is to do the port mappings or use a virtual network solution such as Fanos. And there's a drawback of this approach in OpenStack because 
the port mapping is very complex to manage. And uh, the solution such as Flano is create overlay networks. That has a performance problem because the traffic is encapsulated two times. And so the performance between containers is not good. So in OpenStack, the general, the natural solution is to use the neutrons to provide the networking for the containers. And the current project is create to bridge the COEs to use the neutrons. So how the, what the, in general speaking, what the query is provides is a set of plugins that is for the different COEs. So if the COE want to set up the networks, they, they call the plugins that is provided by queries. And in the plugins is just receive a, a request from the COEs and translate it to a set of API call that is to the neutrons. And neutron is actually doing the works to set up the network for the containers. And for the storage, that's similar. There's a FUSI project. That is for bridging the COEs and allow the COEs to use the cinders or manilas to, for the container storage. And, but we can see there are several projects that is created to integrate the COE with OpenStack, but there are something that is missing in my views. For example, the image and monitoring. For the image, the common solution is to use a Docker registry and deploy it in the tenants. But the, in OpenStack, the problem is we need to deploy many instances of the Docker registry for each tenant, which is undesirable in some use case. And in, for the image, maybe the GANs can be reused to provide the container image. And uh, for the monitor, maybe the images can be reused. But this is just a possibility. Um, and then I'm going to give a general introduction of the Matlam projects. So for in Matlam, what the Matlam is going to provide is a service that is to deploy a COE on top of a set of NOAA instance. And then after the COE is deployed, you can run the container by using the COEs. And what is shown in this picture is the Magnum is actually not for managed containers. It is managed COEs. And the COEs that is provisioned by the Magnum is the one that is actually managed containers. And this is a list of features, major features that Magnum is providing. You can use the Magnum to provision a Kubernetes, provision a Docker Swarm, or a missiles. And you can scale the cluster and run times by adding, remove the NOAA instance to the clusters. And there's a several security features that Matlam is going to provide and possibly many people don't know. And first is the Matlam is serve as the CA certificate, certificate authorities for the COEs. So um, that's because Matlam is configured the COEs by default, by using the TLS to secure the API endpoint. And in order to use a TLS uh, solutions, it needs a CA. So Matlam is served as a CA. It provides API to issue the certificate and sign the key by using the certificate. And then the second feature is the Matlam will actually generate a dedicated users and a keystone trust for each COEs. And that is because the Magnum want to limit the credentials that is used by the COEs to access the OpenStack service, such as Neutron and Cinders. It want to avoid the security risk, so it create dedicated credentials to make sure the permission is right. And the COE get the right permissions and didn't have any security risk. And So in the last release, we update the mission statement of the Magnums. We do that because there are several confusion of what is Magnums. And some people think that in Magnum, the container is a first car resource. And the other people think the Magnum is used for managed containers. 
So this is actually not true to clarify the the confusions. The MATLAB community is designed to update the mission statements. So the MATLAB, in before the MATLAB is called a container service. Right now it's called a container infrastructure management service. And the mission statement is rewrite it to clarify that the MATLAB is for managed COEs. It's not for managed application containers. And along with the update of the mission statements, there are a change in the API levels. So in the left side is the API resource that is in the M release of the MATLABs. It has the Bay and Bay model that is for provision the COEs. There's a containers which is a Docker Swarm containers. There are a set of resources that belong to the Kubernetes such as port service and replication controllers. So in the right side there's an M release we can see that what is keep what's the API resource in the MATLAB is that is left over is the Bay and Bay models and all the other resources are removed. But the container resources we introduced in the new project that is right now it's called the Zun. And and then I'm going to talk about the new project, the Zun project. The Zun so uh, in right now, there's uh, two ways to consume the service from the COEs. The first way is to use a native API that is provided by the COEs. And the second way is to use an open set API that is provided by Zun. And what is Zun is, Zun is provide an API that is to abstract the container lifecycle management. It provides a simple API that is generic and across all the container technologies. It, in the back end, it has a deep integration between the OpenStack and containers. And it integrates with several OpenStack services such as Keystone, Nova, Neutrons, etc. So why, why we create this new project? Because there is, there's a no perfect way to that because uh, right now in OpenStack it is some use case in container that cannot be addressed. So for example, there's a solution such as Nova Dockers that is to allow the user to use a Nova API to drive the containers. But why, if the Nova Docker is there, why we create a Zoom project? That is because the API of the virtual machines and the container is, is different. There are a set of operations such as create, list, and delete that is not shared. But actually, VM and controller have their own set of operations. So in containers, the run and execute, and there are several parameters in the create that is special for the containers. So in order to explore the feature that is specific for the containers, we create a project that is have create a new API that is for the containers. And then um, MATLAB is a project that is to allow users to create COEs and use the COEs to run the containers. So if the MATLAB is there, why we need the Zun? That is because the Zun is enable a different models to use the containers. So in the right, in the left side, it is show how the COE is deployed by the MATLABs. So MATLAB is actually, in MATLAB, a COE is belong to the talents. The whole COE belongs to the talents. It cannot be shared between the talents. But more precise, to speed it more precisely, is a COE is actually belong to the users. So, so MATLAB is actually don't allow a COE to be shared between the users. Like in the lowers, it is no one not allowed to use share the key pair between the VMs and in the MATLAB that is similar. So if so for example if uh, if there's a public cloud that has a large number of tenants and have a large number of users, each user need to create their own COEs and as a result in the cloud there will be many COE deployments. That is that is sort of duplicate. 
And why why it is not good to have this? Why it is not good to have many COEs? That is because the deployment of each COE is taking the resource, and each COE need to have a set of the master node that is configured to serve as a control plane, and this master node is wasted because it's not used to run the workload. And another thing is each COE need to have a flowing IP, need to have no balances, and it need to set up the infrastructure to monitor the status of each COE. So if we have many COE in the cloud, there's a lot of efforts to maintain this deployment. So this problem is solved by the Zoom because Zoom uh, provides a single and single and consistent API that is for all the tenants. So all the container that is managed by the Zoom that is in a centralized way. This is good for the resource utilizations, and also it it will help to release the requirements that the container must run in the virtual machines. That is because in June, it is not assumed that container have to run in the virtual machines. The container can run in the bare metals. And it, there's a use case for that because, uh, for example, if the cloud just have uh, one talent, it didn't make sense to run all the container in virtual machines. And another example, if, if the cloud is using a container that is, that is provided by the hyper, which have a strong iso isolation capabilities. It also didn't make sense to use the virtual machine as isolators. So here is a list of the summary that why we created Zoom projects. And Zoom is provide a simple APIs that is container oriented, and it is independent of the Pacific container technologies. It provides a common infrastructure that is for the VMs, bare metals, and containers. And if in June the user don't need to manage the container hosts or the clusters, so what they need is they just if they want a container, don't, they don't need to get a host first. They just give me a containers, and the container will run in the pool of hosts that is set up by the cloud providers. And this is different from Matlam, because in Matlam, if you want a container, you want to get a cluster first, and then wait for the cluster to boot up, and then you run the container on the clusters. And in June, this is simplified. So this is the architecture of the June. It has an API that is for process arrest request. It has a June compute that is deployed in the each compute host to allow the, the service to scale, scale out. And it has different drivers. That is, each driver is for driving different COEs or container runtimes. And the container is managed by the COEs and the runtimes. So the, there's a, this here is a concept of the June. It has containers, but it also has a sandbox. So a container is just a Linux container, like a Docker. And, but a container has to run in a sandbox. And a sandbox can have one or multiple containers. A sandbox is created to serve as a placeholder for the, for the container. So it has a box, so all the containers run in the box. And it should create an isolated environment for all the containers that is inside the box. And in, in the sandbox, there could be a, a Network interface, they could, they could have uh, volumes. If the resource is there, uh, it is shared by all the container in the box. And a sandbox can also use to enforce the resource constraint. For example, you can set the CPU or memory of the sandbox, so the aggregate resource consumption of all the container cannot go over this limit. And what exactly is a sandbox? So a sandbox can be implemented differently by different drivers. So for example, in the hypervisor-based container runtimes, a sandbox can be VMs. In Kubernetes, a, sand a sandbox with a set of containers can be implemented as a pod. 
And in most of the case in the general uh, Linux containers, a sandbox is a set of, could be a set of Linux lamp space. And, but in our first implementation, we implement a container as a Docker container, and we implement a sandbox by also using a Docker containers. What it means is, if in Zoom, if you create a container, it, it will actually create a sandbox for the containers. There are two containers that's create. One is a sandbox container. The other is the container that is requested by the users. And right now, we currently support one-to-one -one match, matching for the sandbox and the containers. So a sandbox is one-to-one -one match the containers. But in the future, we are going to support to have multiple containers in the same sandbox. And this is the simplified version of the command that we are going to run to create a sandbox and create a containers. So in the first command, it will create sandbox as a Docker containers by using an empty, by using an image that is a Kubernetes plus. And what this command doing is actually create empty containers that didn't do anything but to reserve a set of Linux uh, lamp space so that in the future, if we create a container in a sandbox, we can run the container in this LAMP space to share the resource. And in the second command, we can see that we run the actual containers, but we add a set of actions, uh, sorry, a set of options, and to make sure that the container didn't create their own LAMP space. They join the LAMP space of the sandbox containers. And so why we introduce a sandbox? Because that's the reason why Kubernetes has a port. And the sandbox is allow a set of containers to be co-located and co-scheduled and scheduled to the same host. It allows to share the network LAMP space. So all the containers have the same, share the IP address and the network device. It share the volumes and it share the resource limit. And most importantly, we create a sandbox because we, this allows us to use the NOAAs to create a sandbox. And so that means is the management of the container and the sandbox is different. We use the NOAA to manage the sandbox, and after the sandbox is created, we use the Zoom API to create a container inside the sandbox. And the reason we use the NOAA because the NOAA, the container created by the NOAA have all the thing we want, for example, it has the neutron pop, it put into the neutrons, it have it it has been scheduled by the NOAA schedulers and it just has everything we want. So we decide to use the NOAA. And this is the this is how the work how it works. When when we create a container in Zoom, first is the user is to send a request to Zoom to create a container. And what the Zoom doing is first is to send a request to NOAA and ask NOAA to give me a sandbox containers. And the NOAA will schedule the, contain, will schedule the sandbox to a host, to a physical host. And that's, an, that's running a NOAA compute. And the NOAA compute will have a Docker drivers. That is for create a NOAA instance, which is actually a sandbox. And after a sandbox is created, the Zoom will ask the Zoom, comp the Zoom agent, which is the Zoom compute, that is one, that's an agent running inside the compute host, to create a container that is inside the sandbox. And yeah, this is how, how the, how Zoom to create containers. And this is another feature, that is the container image. And in Zoom, the, how, how to measure image is also possible. So user can provide different drivers to support different way to store the container image. Right now we have two drivers. The one is for pulling image from the Docker Hub. Another driver is pulling image from the GANs. And then I'm going to show a demo of the new project. Um,
so so this is the this is the horizons uh, UI, and this is a so in the there's a tab in the containers which is the panel that the Zoom project provide, and inside the pa inside the container panels. You can create containers, and you can set the name of the containers, and set what the image this container is going to use, and you can set a command of what this container is going to run, and yeah, in the spec, there's you can set as CPUs and memories, and then there's other set of parameters that you can set in the UI and then after the parameter is set you click the button to run the containers so uh, when when the container is creating is actually create a sandbox in the from the NOAA first so in the NOAA in the UI of the NOAA you can see the sandbox is here and And then right now the data is stopped, so it means the container is already created. And we can click the container to see the detail of the containers, and we can see the logs of the containers. Then we are going to start the containers, and this container will execute a command that is echo hollows. So in the log, there should be hollows that is there. And if it's Start the container again. It will print. It should print to hello. And we can see there's a two hello that is there. So this is the very simple container that is created by, by the June projects. And then I'm going to show the CLIs. So all the functionality that is in the UI is, is also available in the CLIs. So you can list the container, you can show the detail of the containers. And then, yeah, you can use a NOAA list and you can see the sandbox is there. And in here you show the Docker PS, it shows there's actually there's two containers. One is a sandbox, another is the actual containers. Yeah. Then I'm going to delete these containers. And another example I'm going to run is to use the Zoom to deploy an app application that has the two containers. One is a database, one is an application service. So first I'm going to create a database containers. It uses an image that is my C code. And in the environment variables, I'm going to set as, as I'm going to set the in, as few environment variable. That is the database, the password of the database, and the user of the database. And then we wait for this container to start and. So the container should should put should start very fast. Is yeah. yeah. So right now the container is create. I click the start, and this database should be up and running. Yeah. So this is the sandbox of the Noahs. So it shows the IP address. This IP address can be used to access the containers. And it's, a, it's an IP address provided by Neutrons. And it has a security group. So right now I'm going to try to use the MySQL CLI to access the database. But actually this should be failed, should fail, because the security group is closing the port. So by default, it's not allowed to access the database. It shows that the container is secured by the security group. And so you can use the security group to secure each part of the containers. 
So right now, I'm going to open the MySQL pod that is in the security group. I'm going to add a rule that is allow all the traffic from the pod 3306. And then I'm going to try to use MySQL to access the database again. So right now we can get into the database. And I run a command to verify that the database is working. And, and so right now we have the container that is that is actually for hosting a database. I'm going to create another container that is for hosting the application service. We call it the web service and we use the image that is a WordPress. That is get it from Docker Hub. And in the environment variables, I'm going to point to this container, to the database containers. So I'm going to answer the user's passwords and the IP address of the of another containers. So, and then this application controller, sh this this container that is hosting the application server should read the environment variable from the June that is passing to set up the connection to a database. So right now the container is created. I'm going to start the containers. Now the container is running. And I'm going to go to the, the NOAA again and to open the port for, open the security group to allow the traffic to access the application service. So I'm going to open the port that is 18. And so then I, I get the, I try to get the, I use the IP address of the, I get the IP address from the NOAA's and then go to, go to IP address. We can see the application is up, up and running. And I'm going to, set up the applications to make sure the application set a few of, to dump the a set of database tables in the database. So right now, this is the application. This is the WordPress. And then I'm going to go to the database again and verify that a set of table is created. Yeah, and that's all from the demo. Yeah, I finish. Uh, any questions? Hey there, very interesting Hi. talk. So we were wondering uh, why are you using Nova Docker drivers? So if Zoom, if Zoom is supposed to you work with Magna, which uh, provision the COE, mm -hmm. why, why did you mention Nova Docker driver? How are you using it? How does it relate to the COE? So, in, so we are not depend on the specific COEs or container runtimes. Everything is implemented in the drivers. So in our first drivers, we are, we are support a Docker container runtimes. That is uh, just a runtime, don't have a COEs. So we use the uh, NOAA Dockers because the uh, NOAA Dockers have everything we want. It has a scheduler, it has a quota management. It, has, it plugs the container in the neutron port so that it has an IP address and everything is get into the neutrons. So that's why we use the NOAA Dockers no, actually, we are not using a Nova Dockers. We provide a Docker drivers for Novas, and that's a customized, and it's not a Nova Dockers. That's why we 
the key is we want to use the NOAAs. We use everything in the NOAAs to get everything we want. And every feature in the NOAA we are going to leverage. Okay, so in other words, you're using Nova as a, well, as a replacement to a COE, just like yet another driver to Zoom. Uh, maybe you can think of this way. I think it's, yeah, you can think this way. Yeah. Okay, so th in the end it will be up to the user whether they want to use Nova as the uh, scheduler for scheduling and provisioning the sandbox or whether they want to use a, uh, say, Kubernetes. Actually, from the end user point of view, they just have the API to get the containers, and they don't know which container. Yeah, true. But, uh, from the administrator's point of view, the, yeah. the person who set up the uh, COE, so it will be up to the, uh, the person who set up the Zoom itself. So it will be up to them to choose whether they want to use Nova for provisioning the sandbox, or whether they want to use Kubernetes or Mesos, whatever yeah. else. Yeah, true. Okay. Okay. Cool. And maybe just quick uh, last question. Uh, what are your uh, plans down the road? How do you plan to proceed with this project? Any additional features you might want to add in the future release of OpenStack? How do you see this thing going mm -hmm. forward? So the first feature um, I want to support is uh, Kubernetes support. So in the next release, we, I think the priority of our team is to work on the Kubernetes integrations. And maybe another feature is the storage. So we we want to have provide, we want to use a Cinders or Malaria or other open source service to provide the storage for the containers. So maybe a Cinder integration. And then maybe we will add support for, for heavy container runtime such as Hypers because the Hyper have a strong isolation. So if you use a Hyper in the NOAAs, you can have everything that is that is strongly isolated and compatible with multi-tenancy model of the OpenStack. And yeah, that is what I can think of. Any other questions? Yeah. Right, so I just wanted to clarify something. And so the, the the current driver with the with the Nova, in mm -hmm. that case, you're not using Magnum, right? No, it's not and using that. So, but the plan is if you want to implement the driver that is, for example, going to use Kubernetes, then you'll leverage Magnum in that case? Uh, the feedback we got so far is to decouple from the Magnums. Entirely. Okay. Yeah, so the driver just has a URI that is set to the endpoint of the Kubernetes, and it should not care if the Kubernetes get from the lowest, from the it should not care the Kubernetes is provisioned by the Magnums or, or provisioned or by other else. tools. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.